We did it, folks! We finally hit 5,000 subscribers here on Media Mementos, and let me just tell you, I cannot begin to let you know my levels of gratitude, nor can my editor, Billy HL, but hey, we're sure gonna try. To celebrate this momentous occasion, we're gonna finally give in to a request. That's right, we normally don't take them here on this channel, but for once, we're finally gonna do it. We're going back to the much-beloved miniseries, Character Quest. Welcome to Character Quest 2.0. Once again, we're gonna take a look at some underappreciated characters and tell you why you should give a crap about them. And our first subject of Character Quest 2.0 is a character from a movie that we've discussed not too long ago. You remember a few months ago when we discussed the movie Rockadoodle? You know, the movie that is credited for ruining Don Bluth's reputation and starting his dark age even though it's actually pretty good? Yeah, that one. In that review, we hinted that the Grand Duke of Owls might have his own character quest video. I want to have enough to say when he gets his own character quest video when it comes back. Whoops, did I just accidentally let something slip or did I do that on purpose? It's still a mystery. Okay, we didn't so much hint it as basically outright stated, but the point still stands. The Grand Duke of Owls is the best character in the entire movie and I'll tell you why. First of all, who doesn't love a good villain, am I right? Voldemort, Darth Vader, Hades, Jafar, Andrew Johnson, they're great! They strike fear into the hearts of the audience and they make you want to root for the good guy even more. The better the villain is, the more likely you're going to sympathize with our main character. With some exceptions, of course, but let's get into those later. And by later, I mean way, way later, if at all. The Grand Duke of Owls is a type of villain that is very difficult to get right. Sometimes, if you overdo it, it can seem a bit pretentious. This being the villain that just is evil, simple as that. The reason he's doing these horrible things is because, to be honest, he's an absolute monster. Before I tell you his plan, let me reassure you that yes, this is a children's movie. I mean, have you not seen the animation in the opening number? Anyways, the Grand Duke of Owls absolutely hates sunlight. Like, he can't stand it. It physically hurts him to be in the mere presence of it. Even a flashlight will send him screaming into the night. Of course, he blames all of his problems on the rooster who raises the sun, Chanticleer. So he comes up with a devious plan to make sure that Chanticleer never raises the sun ever again. He does this by sending Chanticleer into the city by making him an outcast at home. He caused the sun to raise without Chanticleer, causing Chanticleer to get ridiculed and banished from the farm forever. So Chanticleer now has a big new life in the city. And it's going pretty well, but still, he misses his family and his friends. So what's the Grand Duke of Owls gonna do to make sure that he doesn't go back to them? Make sure that there's no family or friends to go back to! Yeah, he's gonna kill everyone there. Not by, like, blowing them up or anything, no, he wants to either eat them, or drown them, or preferably both. And this isn't me just reading into the film, no no no. It's basically outright stated that he wants to drown them by flooding the farm, and it's shown multiple times that he's willing to eat these creatures alive. There's two things that make him resort to this. First of all, he's an absolutely selfish jerk. During his monologue in the beginning, he calls Edmund someone who has no regard for the feelings of others, which, in case you can't tell, is irony. And the other reason is because the Grand Duke of Owls is simply a sadist. He loves seeing people in pain, especially small, helpless, innocent animals. Like in the deleted skunk pie scene, which you're seeing right here. Or when he's led to believe that Hunch killed Edmund and the gang. Take a look at his reaction here and tell me that this isn't someone who just loves the suffering of others. No more kitty, sir. Mission accomplished. And the dog? Gone. Wiped out, sir. <laughs> Total and complete. <laughs> Annihilation. Annihilation. <laughs> How did you do it? <laughs> Adequately. Ad 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 what, what's that supposed to mean? Yeah, I don't really feel comfortable around this guy. I think I'm just gonna pack up and go and make sure that I get to keep all my limbs. <laughs> you know, the more I think about the Grand Duke of Owls, the more he's starting to remind me of another animated villain. Professor Radigan from The Great Mouse Detective. Think about it. He's an oversized creature for what he's actually supposed to be. He thinks that he's this refined, elegant gentleman who everyone loves. 
but is in actuality someone who wants to get nothing but their selfish desires and will sacrifice anybody and everybody to get their way. The Grand Duke of Owls is exactly this, and it kind of makes me wonder if maybe Radigan was an inspiration, but you know what? This video is about the Grand Duke of Owls because Radigan is so beloved that he wouldn't benefit from something like this. The Grand Duke of Owls most certainly would. And what amazes me is that he can kind of flip-flop at a moment's notice. He can treat his cohorts with the absolute utmost respect. But as soon as one of them says something slightly out of the ordinary, like questioning what a flashlight is, he blows up at them. And I'm not saying blows up as in, ooh, he's getting angry. I mean, he absolutely does blow up. He has some very severe anger issues, which goes perfectly in line with him criticizing people with the same issues he has. If someone's quote-unquote uncultured or arrogant or naive, he'll go right after them and make his complaints heard. But if he had some issue like that, which, you know, most of the time he does, oh, well, that's not an issue. That's a character quirk. But despite how nasty and angry he is most of the time, he still treats people with some respect. And I'm not talking about fake respect either, like what you would do when you taunt an enemy, no no no. Take a look at his conversation with Pinky, Chanticleer's manager. He talks to him like a genuine friend, or a cohort, or someone who's on the same level. Even when Pinky isn't exactly getting the right idea, he's still calm and composed. Which makes it kind of strange. You know, some little tiny insignificant nothing can cause him to explode, but something else like a delay in his plan or someone just not getting the bigger picture doesn't do that. This makes him unpredictable and far more intimidating. Tell me, what's scarier to you? A villain whose every single move he can predict right down to the letter? Or a villain who could do literally anything at a moment's notice? And I do mean literally anything, because the Duke does have a reason to be prideful. Not only is he the Grand Duke of Owls, and the leader of the Creatures of the Night, but he also has basically every single power that you could ever want. He has this unexplained magic breath that can basically do anything, like change someone's species, create tangible weapons out of nowhere, or strangle someone. Yeah, the Duke's pretty strong. He's also got this pipe organ weapon that can change the weather. This is how he intends to flood the farm. And speaking of the organ, this actually leads me to a rockadoodle theory that I was going to discuss in the previous review, but didn't really have the time to do so. So one of the main criticisms of rockadoodle is that it's never explained how the sun rose without Chanticleer crowing. And yeah, that is a pretty big omission. It's the event that kicks off the whole movie. You've got to explain it somehow. And trust me, simply saying, oh, the Duke did it, that's not enough. And yeah, that's one of my biggest issues with the movie. Still, though, I think my theory actually answers that. See, the Grand Duke of Owls has that organ, right? And it can create storms, cause lightning, and all that stuff. What if the only two things that could raise the sun were the organ and Chanticleer? Given the fact that the Duke absolutely hates the sun with a burning passion, no pun intended, he's not gonna raise the sun on his own. Which means that Chanticleer is the one thing that is standing in between him and a world of perfect darkness. Yes, insert your own snuff out the like joke here, and moving forward. So, he sent that bad rooster to go pick a fight with Chanticleer while he himself actually did the unthinkable and raised the sun on his own. This caused Chanticleer to leave the farm and then BAM! The sun will never rise again. And speaking of Chanticleer, and this is a bit of a smaller note, but... I love the juxtaposition between Chanticleer and the Grand Duke of Owls. I already mentioned this in the previous Rockadoodle video, but I think it needs to be repeated. The Grand Duke of Owls is the exact opposite of our hero Chanticleer. They're both birds, right? But they have a ton of differences. Chanticleer has a bunch of bright colors on him while the Grand Duke of Owls is constantly covered in shadow and has dark pastel shades. Chanticleer loves country music, which is something that is seen as more quote-unquote down-home and common, while the Grand Duke of Owls loves grand opera. Chanticleer is small and buff, while the Grand Duke of Owls is gigantic and overweight. Chanticleer is very easygoing and temperamental, while the Grand Duke of Owls once again can explode at a moment's notice. Chanticleer is very humble and doesn't think highly of himself. Meanwhile, everybody around him worships the ground he walks on. The Grand Duke of Owls thinks that he's the best thing since sliced bread, but everybody either fears him, hates him, or has some combination of the two. See, 
That's how much thought went into Rockadoodle, and that is why I really think this film should be given more attention. But I've already said that before, we've already covered the film, now we're covering its villain, the Grand Duke of Owls. Don Bluth has always made some pretty great villains, hasn't he? Even in bad movies like A Troll in Central Park or Anastasia, which, yes, I don't like that movie. I'll explain some other day, just not now. The villains are the best part. I mean, come on, In the Dark of the Night, one of the best villain songs ever. Even Queen Ganorga is often seen as one of the best parts, if not the best part of A Troll in Central Park, Bluth's absolute worst movie. But the Grand Duke of Owls? Nobody ever talks about him. I mean, come on, Ludmilla from Bartok gets more credit than he does, and she's not even a good villain. The Grand Duke of Owls is criminally underrated, just like the movie he comes from. Trust me, if you're gonna see Rockadoodle for any reason other than the animation, make it for the Grand Duke of Owls. He makes for a great character study. There are lots of conclusions you can come to him, and hey, maybe I've missed some. If I have, please let me know in the comments below because I would most certainly like to see more Grand Duke of Owls fans, if they even exist outside of me and my editor. Oh well, I guess the Grand Duke of Owls fan club will just stay at two people. Oh wait, I forgot there's three. Andrew Johnson just joined. Is it okay if we just, like, cancel this week's meeting? I don't want to talk to him. Well, folks, thanks for watching the video. Are you happy that Character Quest is back? What do you think of the Grand Duke of Owls? Do you think I made some good points? I sure hope so, but... Don't let that change your input. Much. Comment below and let me know because I'm always excited to hear what you guys have to say. Real quick before we go, I'd like to thank our Patreon executive producers, Rizio, Jay, Lee Fraser, and Sophie Burgers. If you too would like your name read aloud at the end of every Media Mementos video, then consider donating to our Patreon, link in the description below. Thanks for watching everybody and I'll see you guys next time. And this next video, I'm feeling quite proud of. Hint, hint.